Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu, when a stain who when a stock guru, when I was a bilam in Shuri and Fusina, women say Yati Amalina. May Yadi Hilla who fell on the Lilla, who may you live for a Hadiella. I shall do a la ilaha illa who were the who la shrikala, and a Mohammedan of the who were a Sura who. Ya a you Halazina Amanutukullaha, Hakka to Katihi, Vulatu Mutuna, Illa wa unto Muslimoon. Ya a you Hanas, Ataku Rabu Kumulazi Halakum in Nafsin Wahida, Wahalaka Minha Zojaha. وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالٌ كَثِيرٌ وَنِسَاءٌ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَكُلُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ مَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا All thanks and praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek Allah's help and his forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds, and whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whoso Allah uh, leads astray will never find guidance. And I bear witness that uh, Muhammad sallallahu is a servant and his messenger. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, once again, we have an opportunity to reflect on the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, we approach the end of this month of Ramadan, and this should be a clue to us to start working harder to reconnect with our creator. Uh, up until now, you know, hopefully everybody's Ramadan is going well. Everybody's hopefully meeting the goals that they set for themselves during this month of Ramadan. That is an important dimension whenever we enter this month of Ramadan is to have these goals, to have these moments that we create for ourselves to connect with our creator. And for myself, at least, one of my goals each Ramadan is to always finish reading the Quran at least once. Now, typically I read the English translation, but I also read the Arabic translation as much as I can with as much time that I have available to me. And I know it's a struggle for everybody, myself included. Some days are better than others, but nevertheless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us for our efforts. And today I'd like to reflect with you on two of the names um, um, that usually are paired together. And those names are Al-Zahir and Al-Batin. And those two, these two names, so Al-Zahir means the perceptible or the manifest, and Al-Batin means the imperceptible or the hidden. So both of these names, you know, if you talk about perceptible and imperceptible at the same time, they should feel like a paradox in our mind. How can it be? How can it be that Allah is both perceptible and imperceptible? In the outward sense of the word, perceptible means to be visible, to be obvious, uh, to be able to be seen with our eyes. And imperceptible in the outward sense means that we cannot see it with our eyes. We, we can't touch it. So from an inward sense, Imperceptible means that we can sense it in our being. We can sense it spiritually. So we don't see Allah in the material sense, and we can't see Allah. And, and you know, we can only see Allah's creations. And if you know, we were to see physically what Allah would look like, we would be decimated. And we actually know this from the Quran. Uh, when Allah met with uh, Musa Islam for the first time in Surah Al-Araf, verse 123, we're told about this, that when Moses came to the appointed time and his Lord spoke to him, he asked, my Lord, reveal yourself to me so I may see you. And at that point, Allah answered, you cannot see me, but look at the mountain. If it remains firmly in place, only then will you see me. And when his Lord appeared to the mountain, he leveled it to dust and Moses collapsed, collapsed unconscious. And when Moses recovered, he cried, glory be to you. I turn to you in repentance and I'm the first of the believers. And this is in, you find this in Surah Al-Araf, verse number 143. That's the seventh chapter. And we learn from this verse that we are unable to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. So we can't perceive Allah uh, in this world, materially speaking, but we can perceive Allah through his creations. Um, in fact, I, I really like the example that Ghazali uses, and it's a beautiful example to explain this concept. Um, and I'll go a little bit deep into the example. And so consider, consider for a moment that you have, um, you have picked up a book. You walk into a bookstore, you've picked up a book on the topic that you really love. So any book, could be any book on the topic that you enjoy and the book is in your hand, you're holding it. It is real because you can touch it. You can perceive this book. The author you know, is also real for you. You know this because you have a book in your hand and this is proof of the existence of the author and this is proof of the existence of the book, a work that is on that topic. And as you start you know, looking at the book, you start examining the cover of the book, you see the name of the author on the front of the book or somewhere on the book. Now, this is a second validation for you. You know 
that this person exists. You know this person is real because now you have a name to go with that with that person that you perceive to be real. You may not know this person. You know, it's probably likely that you never met the author, but you're 100% confident that this person is real. You can assume that the author has a mind that functions. You can assume that the mind is smart enough to string these words together into thoughts so that they can compile a book that you're holding in your hand. And you can also assume that this author has limbs, can write with, has ears, can hear, uh, can, have, can see with their eyes. They can perceive the world around them. And you can further assume that this person is an expert, which allows them to write in the topic, uh, which is this book that you're holding in your hand. And you have enough interest in this topic to now go and pick up this book. Okay, so now you have this book in your hand, you proceed to reading this book, you like what the author has to say, you're struck by the knowledge and depth and wisdom that is now inside of this book that now you're receiving uh, through this book. And you can now relate to the author as well, because now there are experiences in this book that resonate with you. And you're absolutely mesmerized, captured by the words, thrilled with this new knowledge that your mind is now harvesting as you read each page one at a time. And with every turn of the page, you feel anxious. You feel excited that this knowledge is now going to help you in some way in your day-to-day -day life, maybe even your professional life, maybe in the smallest of ways possible, but it's going to help you in some way. And you want to very quickly put this knowledge into work. You know, the author's words have force and effect on you. You know, it challenges your assumption. It forces you to think about yourself, about the knowledge that you have in that particular area. And as you consider these new perspectives, you now have a broader awareness of things. Your excitement is now just rising and percolating above. And when you finish reading this book, you know, you can't wait to put what you've learned into action. You know, still, you haven't met the author. You have no idea where the author lives, and you have absolutely no idea what kind of a person they are. They could be the nicest person. They could be the least nicest person. You have no clue. But the book in your hand, the author of this book, has you wrapped around their finger. You're in absolute awe of the contents of this book. Okay, You perceive the author, but the author does not perceive you. It's a one-way relationship. Okay, This person doesn't know that you just read their book. They have no clue that you're absolutely mesmerized by the ideas within it, okay? But you exist, you are real. Your feelings for the book are real. The book that is in your hand is giving you new inspiration, new motivation, but the author has no clue. Absolutely imperceptible, neither do the people around you because only you can perceive that within you, what is going on. So if we take this example and then we apply it to ourselves in our environment in the world that we live in, you know, this world is like the book in this example that I just gave you. You know, we know the world is real. We live in it. We can touch it. We can feel it. We can see it. We can hear it. We can smell it. We know the things that we see around us didn't just magically appear one day. What does that mean for us? There must be an author of this existence we are living in right now. And our existence and the existence of this world is a validation of the of a higher power that exists out there. And as Muslims, we believe this higher power is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like the author of the book in our example, we've never met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we experience Allah through his creations and through our spiritual being. In every way that this world that we live in touches us, we experience it within ourselves. The interactions we have with our community members, with the people around us, with the content that exists out there in this world. We experience this world in many different ways. And everything in this world, everything exists because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it. Just like the words on the pages in that book, in that example. Allah has put us in the center of one of his masterpieces. Not just put us in the center and just leave us there. Allah said, here you go. I'm going to give you guidance as well through this book. So, we have this world we live in. Allah has given us a book as well called the Quran. And this is not just any book. This is a book that tells us what we are and how our nature is like. It also teaches us how we should be like if we want to be successful in this world and the hereafter. So we have guidance effectively. We're in center stage. We have guidance. And moreover, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a miracle that each and every one of us experience on a, on a daily basis. And what is this miracle? 
This miracle is called free will. And by free will, I mean a will that is free from compulsion. This means we can move about in this world. We can learn from it. We can interact with it. We can use the creations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for our benefit. Now, while we can see the world around us, we can see Allah, we can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. But you know what? We can feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything around us. You know, if, if we choose to acknowledge that Allah exists. And beyond that, I mean, look at the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us the ability to choose. To choose whether we believe or not believe in Allah's existence. Okay, think about that for a minute. We can choose to acknowledge or not acknowledge the creator of the universe. Not only can we disavow the existence of Allah, but we also have the will that is so free from compulsion that we can choose to refuse guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, think about the power that it takes for somebody to say, here you go, you don't have to say thank you. The guidance that has come to us through the revelation of the Quran, through his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rejecting guidance from Allah is a big mistake. It is like being told, if somebody were to walk up to you and tell you, you know what, if you choose these, whatever seven or eight numbers that you need to choose for a lot, if you choose these numbers right now, you buy this ticket, you are guaranteed to win the top prize tomorrow. Imagine somebody walked up to you and told you this. Guaranteed top prize in the lottery. Why would we reject this advice? It's the top prize. You're, you're, you could be the richest person tomorrow by just using these numbers. Why would we choose to look the other way if we know that we are guaranteed the top prize if all we did was follow the direction of this stranger? So when we reject guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are limiting ourselves in the same way. We are telling, we're telling Allah that, you know what? Keep your reward. I'm, I'm good. How is that good? How is that good for us? And that's not all. I mean, Allah is giving us plenty of opportunity. Allah is saying, you know what? Take your time. Maybe not today. Take your time. Come back to me. Okay? Allah is giving us an opportunity to mend our ways and reconsider our position. Because Allah has warned us, warned us about the day when our actions will be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One example of this is in Surah Luqman, verse 33, where Allah tells us, O oh, humanity, be mindful of your Lord and beware of a day when no parent will be of any benefit to their child, nor will a child be of any benefit to their parent. And surely Allah's promise is true. So do not let the life of this world deceive you, nor let the chief deceiver deceive you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, again, this is in, in verse 33 of Surah Luqman. You can find this in chapter 31. And if we follow our desires, if we follow our desires instead of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah is warning us, warning us that we would be deceived by shaitan. And shaitan is the chief deceiver. And by following shaitan, we're going to cause ourselves to be doomed to the hellfire. And while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also al batin the imperceptible, the hidden, Allah perceives everything we think say and do. So imagine going back to that example. The author had no clue that we might be holding this book in our hand. But you know what? Allah knows what we're feeling and what we're thinking better than we know ourselves. And in Surah An-Nisa, verse 170, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, O oh, humanity, the messenger has certainly come to you with the truth from your Lord, so believe for your own good. But if you disbelieve, then know that to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth, and Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. So Allah is warning us that there is nothing that escapes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's awareness. The absolute smallest of small things is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter where it is hidden in the universe. Therefore, it will benefit us to actually follow the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, another name, uh, another name for the Quran is Al-Furqan, the criterion. What this means is that the standard of good and evil, the standard by which all deeds and actions are measured is the Quran. And it's not only just a standard or a guide for us as individuals, it's also a guide for all societies to live in obedience to the one who created the heavens and the earth. You know, in our society, there's a lot of um, discussions about modernity, post-modernity. And, you know, it, it's gotten to a point where, you know, you, you see lots of conversations around these topics about how things used to be in the past and how we need to change things. 
and and almost in many ways it feels like it's like throwing the baby out of the bathwater as you know, you know as the adage goes um, but in doing so as a society you know we also reject those ideas that that we then call outdated uh, or we're no longer in favor and we can see this in media we can see this in print it's all around us in social media as well and when something is no longer in vogue we just you know what that's it we need a new point of view this view isn't good for us and it happens with generation after generation this is not a new phenomenon it's just that now the the megaphone is much larger it goes into more corners of the world than it has ever before and as humans you know we have our nature is to follow our desires okay and and this is this is something that isn't brand new again it's it's been happening for generations on end we follow our desires as human nature this is in our nature allah tells us this in the quran and one place where allah tells us this for example is in surah al-qasas verse number 50 where allah tells us uh, as as allah is talking to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so if they fail to respond to you then know that they only follow their desires and who could be more astray than those who follow their desires with no guidance from allah and surely allah does not guide the wrongdoing people so this is verse 15 chapter 28 surah al-qasas where Allah is telling uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the, the disbelievers, about the politics who are not listening to the message. And let's not follow our desires, you know, especially not our desires without guidance from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the Quran is the standard, the measure by which good and evil are differentiated. And what other source better than that for us? You know, and think about the consistency. This is the word of Allah that hasn't been changed in over... 1400 years okay and in this blessed month of ramadan we have an opportunity to press that reset button for ourselves we have 30 days to reset that habit that takes us away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we think about this month of ramadan as a gift and a gift it is we should realize that you know it's very easy for allah to make uh, fasting or the month of ramadan a once in a year event or once in a lifetime i'm sorry once in a lifetime event instead of a once in a year event. You know, Allah could have said, uh, you can witness the month of Ramadan once in your life and that's good enough and only if you're able to. Instead, Allah has given us this gift year after year. So for 30 days, once a month, once for a whole month, every single year, we get to witness the month of Ramadan when we're alive. And we have an invitation to use this month to build new habits, strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, we all know this, that Allah is closer to us than our jugular veins. We've heard that, that uh, mentioned uh, many, many times. And Allah is closer than we know. We know this also from the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 186, when Allah says, when my servants ask you, O Prophet, about me, I am truly near. I respond to one's prayer when they call upon me. So let them respond with obedience. Let, uh, and believe in me, perhaps they will be guided to the right way. So Allah doesn't expect us to be perfect, my dear brothers and sisters. In fact, it is impossible for us to be perfect. Why? Because perfection belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is telling us in this verse that when we call upon Allah, he will respond. And on top of that, Allah is encouraging us, you know, call upon me, call upon me. And I really like what Sheikh Ibn Tayla has said in his book of wisdom. You know, he really reiterates this point just in a slightly different way by stating that you know, the nearness to him, nearness to Allah, is that we contemplate his nearness. Otherwise, that comparison is, um, what comparison is there between us and the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What this means is that you know, when we want to feel close to Allah, we cannot help but think about Allah. So our spiritual nearness to Allah is predicated on our remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasized uh, in the Quran as well. So in Surah al rad for example, Allah tells us this, Allah bzikr Allahi tatmeenul qulub. Surely in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. So this is chapter 13, verse 28. And what are the ways in which we can remember Allah? So I'll give you three ways in which we can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salah is one way. So if we strive to pray five times a day on their appointed time, as prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will be in the remembrance of Allah at least five times a day. Second way in which we can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and being this is the month of Ramadan, zakat is another way. Thinking about how much of our wealth needs to be distributed to those who are in need, and to who? Who do we give this wealth to? 
you know, as a, as an amana, or do we go distribute it ourselves? So just having that time and space and attention to think about this is connecting ourselves with Allah Taala, being in the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, because that is prescribed for us. And zakat is one of the five pillars of Islam. And the third way in which we can very easily be in the remembrance of Allah most of the days to just say Bismillah Rahman Rahim before we perform any task. Just the act of saying Bismillah before we perform a task for the sake of Allah is seeking the pleasure of Allah and reminding us that we all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one day we will return to Allah. So the task we're doing right now, we're doing it for the sake and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, may Allah elevate our understanding of the Quran so that we may begin to and continue to live our lives under the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah increase us in knowledge, give us wisdom and the ability to spread this knowledge in the right way because just having wisdom alone and having the right information is not enough. Being able to communicate that information in the right way is another step in that skill. And may Allah give us that skill to be able to communicate in the right way in a similar way that Musa alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that give me the ability to connect or speak to Fir'aun. And to that end, uh, if you remember from the story, Musa alayhi salam asks Allah to let his brother Harun or Aaron uh, come with me, come with him um, as he, as he uh, faced Fir'aun. أقولك لي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم لسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه غفور إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. My dear brothers and sisters, um, we're so close to the end of this month of Ramadan. One more week away, inshallah, and then you know we'll be celebrating Eid together as a community. So for the rest of this time, in the last uh, ten days, we have uh, this is twenty fourth of Ramadan tonight, inshallah. So let's increase our remembrance of Allah in our hearts. Let's just increase the effort that we put in these last 10 days. Let's reconnect with the Quran, um, especially if you're not an Arabic speaking person, you know, at least read it in English. There are many translations out there. Um, you know, I, I have really found the translation of Dr. Mustafa Khattab to be really useful. So let's implement what the Quran has for us in our own lives. It's never too late. You know, like the saying goes in you know, if you try to invest in something, says, you know, if you missed the boat yesterday, the best, the next best time to invest is today. Today is the best day for you to start investing in yourself in the Quran and to implement that in our life. And we don't know when our time in this world is going to come to an end. We have no clue. And if we're not connecting ourselves routinely with the Quran, inshallah, today's the day. And I remind myself first to do this, you know, and I remind ourselves that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-zahir, the, imper the perceptible, and al-batin, the imperceptible. Um, and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, may, may we all perceive Allah spiritually. May we all grow spiritually in our deen and in our iman. I mean, Allahumma, I mean, may Allah accept our du'as as well. Uh, may, Allah, may Allah guide our hearts as well. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zuriyatina kurata yunin wa jalna lamutakina imama. Rabbana faghfirna na zunubina wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tuwafana ma'al abrar. Rabbi jalni mukim wa salati wa min zuriyati. Rabbana wa taqabal du'a. ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المصير ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا آمنا فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وأنت خير الراحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة يا ما يصفون وسلام للمرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم آمين